When you're applying online at primeinc.com on your application, make sure when it asks you where you refer to by an active prime driver, make sure to click on yes. The box below that, make sure to put my driver code, Strexa. Now let's do some trucking. I know a lot of people might think leasing is a scam, but I'm gonna share my settlement for this past week. I'm gonna put it up on the screen. If Prime was really scamming their drivers, if you look on the screen, I circled it in red. That's how much Prime paid me for pulling freight, leasing a semi truck with them. That's for one week. That's how much Prime deposited in my bank account for one week. So people that wanna say that, you know, leasing's a scam, uh, I'm here to tell you firsthand, I've been leasing with Prime. Uh, I've almost been riding solo now for a year and you get out of it what you put in. So uh, if you're trying to be home every weekend or you know, you're know you basically lazy, then no, you're not gonna make any money. So, But if you grind and you grind hard, you can make money. Not every week is this good, but if Prime depositing you know, $5,724.60 in my bank account for a week is a scam, then Prime can keep on scamming me for real. Uh, because if it was a scam, they wouldn't be depositing that money in my bank account. So uh, yes, the truck payments are high with Prime, but if you grind and you're good at time management, the other thing that you need to be good at is managing your money. Cause you might have two really good weeks in a row and then you might have two not so great weeks. So money management is very crucial if you're gonna be leasing. So a lot of people do fail for various reasons. Uh, it could be that they got a, a, a lemon of a truck, you know, a truck that's just a piece of crap, uh, you know, there could be you know, a lot of reasons why people fail. I've been being successful. I ran three loads, so the total revenue for my truck that my truck made was almost $9,000 for one week. So after all my expenses, you know, I made, I put $5,724.68 in my pocket. So, you know, basically a little over $5,700. Uh, yes, I still do have to pay taxes on that money, but that's still really, really good. So, you know, this is, you know, for people who want to say that leasing is a scam, that's fine. There probably are companies out there that do scam you. I don't think leasing is a scam. So, you know, I'm sharing my financial information with y'all. So this is, I didn't just pull these numbers out of my, you know, out of my ass, basically. This is my actual settlement. This is how much money Prime put in my bank for one week of driving. So you run hard. You can't have weeks like this, yes. One of my drive tires is low, I think it's the front left. On all the Prime trucks, they have one of these right here that tells you the pressure for all your tires. So, and right here it's showing the red, so one of them's low, which is this tire, I believe is the front left drive tire. So we're gonna add some air to it. All right. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab some gloves. Always keep your gloves with you in your truck. Get the gloves on. I gotta find my tire gauge in here somewhere. All right, gloves, tire gauge. Now, I've never taken one of these off, but I don't think, I don't think it's too hard. There we go. All right, so now that we got this cover off, Oh shit. Oh, that thing's kind of leaking. Ah, oh, you know what I need to get? Is I need to get one of those kits. That valve in here is loose. Uh, but this is the tire that's low. If you heard that air hissing, that's because the valve inside of this stem here needs to be tightened. I don't have one of those kits, but <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and air up this tire and we'll put this cap back on uh, nice and tight. And I'll eventually have to get one of those um, valve, tight, uh, valve stem tightening tools. I don't have one uh, with me, but that's the next thing I'm gonna have to buy. So this is the front left drive tire. So I'm gonna show y'all again how to hook up your glad end air hose and air up a tire. So the first thing that we wanna do before we pop off our red glad hand is we wanna drop the bags to our trailer. So I'm gonna drop. Yeah, see this thing's beeping, yeah. That's the tire. Okay, so. First thing we want to do, we want to pull our red trailer air supply handle out. So that way the, the bags drop. 
Because if I don't do this, when I go to take that red uh, glad hand air hose out, it's gonna and it'll scare scare the crap out of you. Next is we grab our hose. This thing's already already coming in handy. And I'm gonna go into this pilot and see if they have one of those tools. All right, so we wanna take this off and we wanna connect these like an X. So make sure the seals are like this in front of each other and then put them in the grooves. Make sure they're tight. All right, now it's snapped into place. Now we need to supply air to the hose. And now we're just gonna push our red handle in so we can get some air. Uh, next, we're gonna push our air, uh, trailer air supply, the red button, push it in for air. Now we should have air in the hose here. Yep, we got air. So, yeah, we wanna take this back off. And we wanna fill this up. Yeah, eventually I'll get rid of these little plastic things. I think those are kind of hideous. You get the chrome cover for it. I'm gonna put it up to 100 pounds. I'm gonna check it now. Oh, we got 92, almost there. Almost there. Yeah, it's starting to snow a little bit. A little snow sprinkle here. Let's check it again. Uh, 94, we're getting there. There you go, buddy, yeah, there you go. Nice. Good job, buddy. I think I went, I think I went a little, I think I went a little bit over. Try it now. All right, let's take a little bit more air out. All right, now we're gonna check it one last time here. Right at the 100 mark, baby. Perfect. There we go. There we go. And we're gonna put this cover back on here. There we go. Bam. There we go. That's how you do it. All right, turn that off. There we go. See, that wasn't too bad. We just wanna push it away from each other. There we go, perfect. And we'll hook this right back up to the trailer. There we go. And wind our hose up. This has already come in handy. So now I've got that, the glad hand back on the trailer. So I'll put air back in the trailer bags. And let's check. Now our red light is off. Let's see what it's showing us. All right, so now it's showing uh, 100 pounds, 100 pounds in the tire, light's green, so we good. And that's how you air up a tire like a big boy. So I'm down here in Effingham, Illinois, and I stopped here last night, uh, cause tomorrow I was supposed to go get loaded in Clinton, Indiana. So I stopped here at this, uh, the, the Petro that I'm at currently right now. I stopped here last night. I took a hot shower, got some laundry done. I was gonna take my 34 here. And I came back inside of my truck. I put all my clothes up, kind of organized my truck a little bit. And I went to lay down and I'm like, man, it's kind of cold in my truck. It got down to like 20 degrees. And I'm like, that's weird. So I look over and my bunk heater isn't working. And my APU wasn't firing up. So I come outside of my truck to do some investigating just to kind of take a look to see kind of what's going on. And whenever I came out to my truck, I noticed this is all, all coolant, coolant down here. So I'm looking around. I noticed it from this side of my truck. You know, I, I walked over here to the passenger side and I noticed this pile of coolant last night and I smelled like a strong burning, burning coolant. So, you know, I was kind of looking around, you know, I opened up, opened up my APU. There's an on and off switch. I flipped that on and off. I turned it off for about five minutes and I also I also turned the switch off inside the freight liners downside by the driver's side door right in here there's a, a on and off a on and off switch my truck's a little dirty but there's an on and off switch so I turned the main power source uh, off and the APU off for 10 minutes I set a 10 minute timer 
turn power sources back on. I couldn't get my APU or my bunk heater to fire up at all. Uh, so started my truck, but before I started my truck, I came back out and because of that pile of coolant on the ground, I started looking around and I started to do some investigating. This is uh, the eco heater. On the back side, right here, it was dripping and it was leaking. It was leaking everywhere. It was a little bit of a drip right here. So I lost half a gallon of coolant. What I did is I got my 516 socket torque drill out and I tightened this down so this isn't leaking anymore. I could easily uh, bypass that, but I just ha have all the valves open up so that way the coolant's constantly flowing uh, to my eco heater. Uh, the eco heater box is for whenever you have to run these in transit heat lines that are on the back of the truck. When you have to run them to keep the product, let's say you're hauling chicken fat so that way it doesn't thicken up you want to keep it warm you got to run your in transit heat line so on these valves i could bypass it because right now you see all these are open when they're in line with the hose that means that all these valves are opened up so i could easily have just closed these valves so that way it stops so now that this sideways this is closed i just leave these open so that way coolant is constantly flowing to my eco heater box in case i do have to run my in transit heat lines i had to end up co contacting road assist my plan was is today i was actually going to drive to Springfield, missouri because there's a, a thermo king because this truck's under warranty so uh like i said the ap and bunk heater isn't working so i was going to just drive to Springfield, missouri where i live and then on Monday, have Thermo King look at the bunk heater. So uh, basically I had to end up idling my truck. My plan today was to drive my truck to Springfield, Missouri, which from here is about like four and a half hour drive. So that I was just gonna basically have some home time today. And then tomorrow, check my truck into Thermo King so they could look at my bunk heater and my, my APU to kind of see what's going on. Road Assist asked me if, you know, if I've been uh, using a, anti-gel because it's you know 20 degrees and yes i do use anti-gel i grabbed these bottles from walmart this uh lucas anti-gel this stuff works really good it's like 13 or 14 bucks for this bottle and this treats uh 300 gallons in one bottle so road assist was thinking that the the fuel lines in my apu were kind of gelled up so but that's not the case so i already checked the fuel line on it uh, it's getting pressure to the fuel. When I woke up this morning to take off, check engine lights on my dash. My ABS light on my trailer just came on as well this morning. My ABS light on the trailer came on. I contacted Road Assist again and I told them, I'm like, hey, this is what's going on. Now I got these engine lights. I idled my truck all night. Whenever I was uh, looking up the engine codes, cause Freightliner gives you a book to these trucks, some booklets and pamphlets for the truck itself uh for the engine and there's also a couple of these like laminated uh laminated papers it's got information like on using your jake brakes uh all the dash controls what they mean so i was looking up and i saw on here that it gives you information i don't know if y'all can see that but it basically gives you information on what all these codes on your dash mean so as i as i was uh looking looking these up it's saying that there is an issue with the def system with that code that it would limit me to only going 55 miles an hour and after so long it would shut my truck down to five miles an hour so rather than try to risk running to springfield missouri to go to the thermo king i contacted a road assist and they're able to check all the codes. Uh, these trucks are very smart. So Prime could see everything that's popped up on my dash. Road Assist guy that I spoke with, I told him what was going on with my truck. I told him, you know, my check engine lights came on. I told him exactly everything that I did from last night till this morning. I don't want to risk driving. And literally right across the street, there is a Freightliner dealership and a mechanic shop. So I told him uh, it's probably best to just go there to have the truck looked at and he looked it up and he said yeah that's where i'm gonna send you to uh which it's right across the street here so uh let me see here if i can actually pull this place up uh prior to me actually calling prime i was trying to get you know look into everything to see kind of you know what's going on with my truck seeing if there was anything that i could do i wanted to get as much information as possible before i called road assist i didn't want to call them and just be like oh my engine light's on I don't know what to do. So I, I did as much research and investigating as possible so I can have as much information for the Road Assist team member 
before I contacted them. So what I did, first I went to, to Google to see if there was any Freightliner dealerships around, and I did find one. So if you look up on the screen, this is actually from my Trucker's Path navigation. If you look up on the screen, the blue circle, that's where I'm at. I'm at this Petro uh, Travel Center. Right above it, you see it says uh, Truck Centers, Truck Centers, Inc. Freightliner. So this, this place right here is actually where I'm gonna be taking my truck tomorrow to have them look at it to figure out exactly uh, what's going on. This is the first issues that I've had with, uh, with this Freightliner, but I'm not gonna stress about it. There's no reason to stress about something that I don't have control over. These things are gonna happen. Plans always change. Nothing's never you know, consistent. You just, when you have a problem, you just you know, focus on that one problem. Don't focus on everything. One problem at a time and then just solve it. Otherwise, you're gonna stress yourself out. You know, there's, there's no need to do that. These things are gonna happen. You know, just, just take one problem at a time and then you do what you can to get that problem taken care of. So I'm still out here learning, but I'm not gonna let this stress me out. So I just did some uh, trip planning for whenever I go over to this Freightliner uh, dealership repair repair shop tomorrow. I always check on, you can check through Google Maps and do a satellite view of the top of where you're going. So I did check, as you can see, they do have room where I can actually drop my trailer in their parking lot while they're working on my truck. But in the case that there isn't parking, let's say you're going somewhere to get repaired and you need to bobtail and you gotta drop your trailer, make sure you grab yourself one of these trailer locks. It's to put on the trailer right here. This is actually a metal style lock for the glad hand on the trailer. Pick this up for like 22 bucks on Amazon. So they do make plastic ones, they're cheaper. I got a metal one. If you wanna get a plastic, that's up to you. I got a metal one, it's better quality. Now a thief can still break it off if they wanted to, but it's just a little bit of security. I thought I was gonna have to drop my trailer here at the Petro and drive across the street. But like I said, I did a little trip planning. I could drop my trailer at Freightliner while they're working on my truck. I made it to the Freightliner dealership, which it was literally right across the street from the Petro that I sat at uh, all weekend. I got here at seven o'clock in the right, morning. Watch out, we gotta drop a lot of kids off the bus. <laughs> uh, my CB radio. So I dropped my trailer, moved my truck to the front, went and checked in with them. Got here right when they opened at seven o'clock in the morning. It is now 8.51 and my truck is already fixed. I just got done hooking up back up to my trailer. The DEF pump went out of it and they were on it and they've already replaced it. So that's the good thing I like about Prime is because how much uh, money Prime spends on their equipment with Freightliner, Peterbilt International. These shops, whenever you take your truck there, they're gonna get right on it and they prioritize Prime trucks. I was in and out, so now I gotta drive to uh, Springfield, Illinois to a Thermo King because my bunk heater and APU is not working. So, cause I had to idle my truck uh basically for two days so apu controls right here for my bunk heater and apu it's lit up but it's not it's not doing it's not doing anything and i already went outside and reset my apu and everything i checked all the fuses uh, underneath the bunk for this and it is not not working so i'm right now uh i want to do a little bit of trip planning so that way i could go to uh, thermo king and i got a message road assist to let them know they got my truck fixed and i am on the way to thermo king you will see how how much longer i'm going to be down for but i got to drive to uh springfield illinois over to thermo king so don't stress about things you can't you have no control over i don't have any control over my truck and then my you know bunk here and apu not firing up all right let's hit it we're gonna go ahead and uh, navigate to this guy let's roll so i'm 91 miles so two hours and 12 minutes, and then we're gonna get to this uh, Thermo King and have them look at the bunk heater and the APU. I made it over here to Thermo King in Springfield, Illinois, and I just got done rehooking up to my trailer, and I already went inside. I disconnected from my trailer whenever I got here, and then I pulled it up. I pulled up to the to the front of their to the front of their shop, and went and checked in with them, and they pulled it right. In, they they let me pull in right away. And they basically told me, the mechanic said, uh, I think your controls are stuck on stupid. And so he actually showed me that if I have this issue again, basically my uh, buttons and controls on my APU and my bunk heater were frozen. He told me and showed me behind this cover here, the battery, there's a battery cover here. I gotta take this battery cover off. And then in the back, there's a power disconnect. I just disconnect it and that'll basically reset the control. So the controls on my APU bunk heater basically froze. So yeah, I got in and out of here real quick. So I've been down since Saturday night. So Sunday, 
really only a day. I've been basically down for a day. So, uh, but we're gonna hop, we're gonna hop back in the truck, and right now I'm just currently waiting for a load, so that way, uh, that way we can uh, that way we can get out of here. So not too bad, not too shabby. So yeah, we're gonna. We gonna get up out of here. Let's roll, y'all. What is happening, y'all? Good morning. I sent a message over to Road Assist Department. There's a super cool Road Assist guy that I like dealing with. Uh, he works in the mornings, and uh, I sent him a message to see if I was gonna get any breakdown pay. My truck was pretty much broken down from Saturday evening until Monday afternoon, basically. So I just contacted them to see if I was gonna be getting any breakdown pay. He put me down for three days of breakdown pay. When you're leasing with Prime and you break down in your truck, uh, Prime pays you two hundred. $25 a day. Your truck's got to be a, a lease down for 48 hours and then Prime pays you $225 a day. So $225 times three days uh, is what they're going to do for me, which is cool. So breakdown pay, basically you're, you're not making any money off of breakdown pay. It basically covers your fixed costs, like your truck payment, your permits, and your fees. So luckily for that, I shouldn't have a, a negative check because I was only able to run one load that was like $1,200. And then I put $600 in fuel in my truck. Yeah, with my fixed costs and the fuel, I would have went negative. But yeah, I just wanted to let y'all know, if you do break down, uh, just communicate with the road assist department and just communicate well, let them know what's going on. When they send you somewhere, you know, just let them know right away, hey, the problem's fixed or this is what's going on. So I always try to communicate well uh, road assist and your dispatcher they're gonna love that so just always communicate well with them so but like i said i'm just glad that they're gonna be paying me three days of breakdown pay so uh that that's uh definitely helpful so yeah this week's not gonna be this week's not gonna be a great week but that's why uh money management is crucial if you're gonna be leasing because uh, i said before you know you could have a couple good weeks and then you can have a couple bad weeks so it really is it balances out so at the end of 2022 when I finally do my taxes, <coughs> excuse me, when I actually do my taxes and take care of all that stuff, I'll do an official uh, review of my of my pay leasing with Prime for 2022, but I'm gonna hit $100,000 net. So I don't know the exact dollar amount, but it's gonna be a, a little over $100,000 after all my expenses. So uh, that's not too shabby for, for a rookie with leasing. So you just gotta be smart, manage your money well, manage your time well. So, but yeah, we're gonna keep on, we're gonna keep on trucking, y'all. Yeah?